Um, please feel free to hold on to those to later. Um, and we'll see if we have some time, maybe we can try to get through a few of those. Uh, hold on just one second. Let me move this phone because I'm hearing back. Okay, so uh, first let's go through some scriptures. Um, what I wanted to do is try to talk about a few things to remind us uh, why we need to pray, why it's important for us to pray, um, try to think about the mindset that we need to have when we go before God in prayer, um, and just to know that we're going to communicate with God. So uh, the first thing is that we need to be mindful and know that the Lord is concerned with the things that concern us. So let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. I'm going to get that. Okay, and this scripture here, uh, it says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So it's just important for us to know that we can come to God, cast our cares upon him, um, that he's concerned with everything that concerns us. Um, we don't have to try to talk ourselves out of praying about things, thinking that some things are too small to come to God, or, um, you know, he may not be concerned with certain things. It may be just, you know, frivolous, and I don't need to bring it to the Lord. But the truth is, the Lord is actually concerned with the things that concerns us. Um, there's another scripture here that I want to read, uh, which is Luke chapter 12, verse 7. And in this scripture, okay, Luke chapter 12, verse 7, it says, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Now, just to be honest, I mean, God must really be into us if he numbers the hairs on your head. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He's really into us, and he really is concerned with us. It's kind of like a parent being concerned with their child, you know, and everything about that child. So, again, don't talk yourself out of praying to God uh, for things that may seem to be small. Um, or that are small in your sight, or someone else may have said it's, you know, little, you don't need to bring that to them. These are conversations in our way of communicating with God, so we want to keep that in mind and uh, bring it to the Lord. Um, also, let's see, oh, now with this, I think back to Adam communing with God in the garden. Um, you know, let's think about it. It was no big catastrophes happening. Um, you know, it wasn't like he had to pray about, uh, you know, world peace or, you know, some kind of dangers going on. It wasn't things like that. But actually, in this sense, um, God was interested in what Adam had to say. So he would bring situations to Adam and, uh, see what he felt about him, what he had to say. This is the kind of relationship they had. And we know that because uh, we can go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 through 23. And you see in that scripture, let me pull that up, Adam, he would give his rationale for something. God would bring it to him. He would give his rationale for it. And then um, he would also name that. And we see that example um, there, I'm going to read that one for you. Genesis chapter 2, verse. So that's Genesis chapter 2, verses 22 through 23. 
And it says, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. He's ration, given his rationale for it. It's bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So God was interested in what Adam was thinking about, interested in his way of thinking, interested in um, how he sees things and what he was going to say about things. So we have to use that same rationale with us. God is thinking the same with us. So when we come to him in prayer, we're letting him know what we're thinking. Um, he's given us certain power and ability and things that he wants, you know, let's face it, he's given, putting a, a lot invested into us as people. <laughs> so he, got, he wants to see what you made of, what you have to say. Um, so we want to bring those things to God in prayer as well. So just being mindful that the Lord is concerned with the things that concerns us. Um, let's see, next, the next point I want to make is that God is bigger than our situation. Um, God is bigger than our situation. And we can go to Matthew chapter eight, verse 27. So that Matthew chapter eight, verse 27. And in here, we're all familiar with this scripture. And um, it says, but the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Um, this is the same mindset that we have to have when we're going to pray. We're speaking to someone who can calm the wind, calm the seas, uh, just by speaking to it. He's bigger than our situation. In that instance, you know, the disciples were on the ship with the Lord and the Lord was uh, sleeping and everything was just breaking loose on the ship. Water was coming into the ship. Um, everything was going berserk, if you will. But they went to Jesus and woke him up and said, you know, we're going to perish, basically. And the Lord had to rebuke them for having little faith. And he let them know, you know, he just stood up and calmed the winds and the sea. And they were just in awe and said, what manner of man is this, that he can do something like that? And that's the same kind of thought and mindset that we have to have when we go before the Lord in prayer. We're not just talking to someone who's trying to figure out the situation like us or figure out an end to the situation or what needs to be done. He already has the answer and the ability. We just need to go to him and um, seek his, his way on it. Amen. Um, next, the next point I want to bring up, and this we're still talking about the mindset that we have to have um, when we're going to pray. Um, and this point is that faith and prayer go hand in hand. So I want to go to the scripture, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. That's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And let me pull that up here. And I ask you all to forgive me if you hear a lot of background noise. It's a lot of moving around going on. But Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Okay, and so that scripture says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the main word I want to focus on in that is impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, that means no matter what you do, 
you could be living a nice life and you go by doing whatever the little right things are. But as you know, we all gonna stand before the Lord. And when it's our turn to give our account of what we've done in the earth and for him to judge us and to say whether we've done a good job or not, if we haven't used any faith while we were on the earth, then that means that we did not please God. So it's very important to know that faith and prayer, they go hand in hand. Because uh, once you pray about a situation and what type of prayer you're praying about the situation, also, you know, it's going to depict some things because um, you have to move in that faith. And also, um, you know, we stand, um, we're gonna, we stand before the Lord and I'm just thinking about it, you know, how devastating that could be <laughs> to not be able to bring up no situations that you had where you can say, I please God, I actually just jumped out there and, uh, did something trusting in God and believing that he was going to actually catch me or answer my prayer. Um, and he, it worked out. Uh, that's just something that we all need to seek to do in life. And, um, as we go walking on our faith journey, let's call it that, um, and do that. Um, I wanted to give like a, just a simple testimony. Um, at this point, uh, not long ago, my husband and I, we were looking uh, to purchase a home and uh, we were actually renting a house. And so we decided we wanted to purchase. But the thing is, I didn't want to do it the world's way because, you know, the world's way is kind of hard and long. You got to have three years of this and three years of, I don't know pay stubs and student loans papers have to be in order for so many years and um, different kind of things that they require. But for me, um, my thinking was, I need to do this. I need the Lord to make a way for me to be able to do this because I don't have three years to wait, wait around, you know, for something to happen. And, you know, I, I needed to go ahead on and move to the next level. So my prayer was that we didn't have to go through it the world's way. And, um, you know, it was still a process that we had to go through, but I can say the Lord was taking us through a pro the process differently. And it seemed like, I don't know what happened, but the Lord may have kind of blinded some folks <laughs> with some of our information because <laughs> all of our student loan information wasn't together. You know, they say you have to bring a certain, have a certain amount of money to put down. It may be 20% or whatever of your purchase, different things like that. Um, to be honest, I didn't even know if this was going to go through each step of the way, you know, all the way to the closing table. Uh, we were there. I was just sure they were going to pull something up and try to say, you know, stop the transaction. But when we were there at the closing table, um, the lady who was processing our paperwork, she turned to me and she said to me, um, who buys a house and only pays $48.13? And I looked at her and I said, Wow, I don't know. I wish it were me. And she said, where you are today? And I said, whoa, $48.13, that's all I have to pay? She said, yes. And um, then they proceeded to tell us that our interest rate would only be like 1.6% interest when we had been hearing, you know, much higher interest rates. And we didn't even have everything in order. So the Lord was working on our behalf. And he answered my prayer, which was, don't let me have to be held to the world standard and do things their way. I need, I need to do it God's way. I need a miracle in this situation, pretty much. And that's what the Lord did. He blessed us with the house. And we only paid 
$48.13 at the closing and got a 1% interest rate. So God is in control and he will definitely come through every time. That was just a faith walk, you know? And so um, I just thank God for that. And I wanted to let you all know about it because he's still in the blessing business. Um, now I wanna go to another thing here, another scripture. And this is, uh, sorry, it's one of my kids screaming. Somebody just got hurt, okay. That's the thing about being at home with the kids. They always, something going on. So I'm multitasking here, saints. Okay, so next, um, I do want to bring up this scripture too, because I, I kind of feel that this is important uh, for us to keep in mind, um, for us to remember God's intent with man. When we're looking back at Adam, you know, his intent was for man to subdue the earth. And um, we think about subdue, what does that mean? To overcome, bring under control. So it's for man to subdue the earth, not for things to just subdue us. We're supposed to be the ones taking control here. And um, if we go to 1 John chapter 5, Verse four through five, let's pull that up. That's first, first John chapter five, verse four through five. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. So again, here we go. We have to overcome the world, subdue it, use our faith, because that's, this is what God has designed us to do. He placed us here. Um, when Adam was naming things, he wasn't just naming little bitty things, bunny, rabbit, mouse. He was naming all of the animals, big, small, whatever. He was giving his rationale and he was subduing the earth. And we need to do that even in the sense of things that are in this earth. What comes about here, we need to be in control and have the mindset that we're going to go forth and subdue these things. Um, one thing that I, I see a lot, and I put this on here because um, I said faith and prayer goes hand in hand. Um, it's something that I call the they syndrome. And um, that's when people are always saying, well, they say I can't do it. They say, uh, you know, I don't have enough. Uh, they won't let me in. You know, that they mentality, um, we have to put that in perspective and think about it, you know, we're not really necessarily going up against people, but we're just asking God to intervene on our behalf because we don't have to be held by what they say. We need to look to what God said that we can do or what God said we can be, or where God said we can go. You want to go over there? God said, go ahead and subdue the earth. Go on over there. You know, and so that's the kind of mindset we need to have in prayer, knowing that we're going to use faith and walk with God and um, not worry about what they say. And this is, a, um, it's, I guess it's kind of like a testimonial I wanted to give. Um, I was watching one day, this is a couple years back, I was watching um, a news broadcast and, you know, they do specials on uh, you know people who've done something good um, in the world and so they were talking to this man he was a teacher at a school and um, I guess it was a school for the blind and so the teacher himself the man he was blind too and um, so his students that he taught were blind and he was uh, 
teaching like a music class. And so he actually had some people in there who were deaf as well. So you have blind people, can't see, and deaf people, can't hear. But they wanted to start a marching band. And so <laughs> if you think about it, it kind of sounds a little out there, I will to say. But uh, they wanted to start a marching band. And the man said, these were his words. He said, well, they said it can't be done. So I said, well, let's do it anyway. And so ever since I heard that, I kind of took hold to that. You know, that's the same kind of mindset we have to have in God. Even though they said it can't be done, let's do it anyway. Because God said we can do it. And actually, they went ahead and started the marching band. Now, of course, they started out bumping into each other and all this, all this kind of stuff. But eventually, they were able to get their counts right. And they got the marching band going. And this is what made them newsworthy, and they were able to get um, onto the broadcast. But that was just an example of you cannot let people, whoever they are, could be the banker, could be uh, the principal, I don't know, could be your family, could be anybody. You can't let them dictate how far you can go um, because the Lord has not given us limits in the word so we have to just keep that in mind and go forth in jesus name man um also i'm hearing some kind of music or something but I don't know. okay now this is one of my favorite scriptures i do want to give you this one before i move on to the next uh point and this is uh, from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse, verse, 20, verse, verse 27. 27. Something's happening, I hear echo. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 27. Okay. And it reads, and he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Read it again. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. That's a scripture that I say to myself often because I want to keep that going in my head. This may be an impossible situation. I don't know about other people, but I find myself in a lot of <laughs> impossible situations for some reason. So I have to say this is impossible with man. I definitely can't do this on my own. I can't see my way out of it on my own. I don't know how I'm going to get from point A to point B. But with God, it's possible. And so that's something that we want to hold to. And this is in the Word. So we got to hold to it in the Word and use that when we are praying, um, when we are in prayer. Amen? Okay, so next, and I don't know if I'm going through this fast. Let me look at the time. Okay. Okay, next, um, Now, I have another uh, scripture here. Maybe you can look at it. Uh, no, we can go ahead and look at it together. It's the same book, which is Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 10. So Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 10. Okay, and it says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. 
That's another scripture I use all the time. Because to me, that's giving me the steps of praying, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, you need to use your faith and go and seek things out. You can't just really expect things to come to you. You have to get up and do things and do them differently uh, when you're moving by faith. And just, you may not really know where to go, but you got to go somewhere and then the Lord will direct you as you get there. So that's kind of how that works. So you ask, knock, I mean, seek, then you knock, that's your action. Using that action, um, knocking, and it shall be opened unto you. So a lot of times when I've done something, you know, I just pray to you that I've asked about this. And now I am not. Yeah, I'm hearing some noise. I don't know. Okay, great. It stopped. Thank you. I don't know what happened. I'm not good at technology, so yeah. Thank you, Saints. Okay. All right. So next. It wasn't you. Oh, it wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Okay. Um, okay, so now you know. It's so many things, uh, so many different ways uh, to pray and things to pray about. You know, you can pray in the Holy Ghost, um, and that's basically where you're praying with the help of the Holy Ghost, okay? Um, praying in the Spirit of God is also, uh, Jesus is making intercession for us. Um, you can pray in tongues. Um, and let your inner man be strengthened as you're praying. And uh, you may not know what you're saying, but God knows what you're saying. And the Spirit is making intercession for you. You can do it that way. Um, you can also pray in the natural. Um, just using your regular language. Um, praying that way. And all of it works. <laughs> all of it works and I encourage all of it you know um, I can only touch on a few things during this session but uh, please utilize everything that the Lord has given to us to use to communicate with him um, you set aside time talk to him um, even I used to pray while I was on my way to places walking uh, to the bus stop when I used to ride the bus. Now I pray in the car driving. That's a step up for me. I don't know. But I don't have, that's nothing against people on the bus. But uh, I like the bus, but I'm done with the bus if I can be. Okay, I don't digress. Okay, here we go. So next, um, there are two more points that I wanted to bring out. And these are different ways to pray too, things that we need to think about. And this one, the first one is praying with assurance. Praying with assurance. Um, and when you pray with assurance, that means that, you know, the outcome is, is clear. You know, God has spoken this thing. You know that it's going to come to pass. You don't know when, you don't know how. But God has already spoken that uh, this is going to come to pass or this can be done or this is how things will go. Um, and you have a certain confidence when you're praying with assurance. Let's look at a few scriptures that you can use um, as you pray with assurance. Let's go with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Okay, and I'll read it. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able 
but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So anytime we may be feeling tempted to do something that we know may not be pleasing to God, um, may be a bad habit, something that we want to, uh, we'd like to break, we know that God is not pleased with, you can go to this scripture and use this in prayer. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he's, uh, he's promising a way out, a uh, way out of the temptation and a way to escape. Um, another thing that you can pray with assurance is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. We can go to that one. That's Hebrews. Book of Hebrew, chapter 13, and verse 5. And this is for anyone who may sometimes be feeling alone, feel by yourself. Um, Let's see, the scripture says here, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For ye have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So here the Lord we have the promise that the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. Even if it's an issue where we feel like we're in trouble. Um, some people may unfortunately get locked up and go to prison um, or just be in a bad place. But this is another scripture that we can use in prayer, knowing that God is always with us and we're never alone. Amen. Um, one more scripture that we can pray with assurance is found in James chapter one, verse five. James chapter one, verse Okay, now with this one, Emma, what is that? Okay, sorry, Saints, hold on just a second. Okay, so James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Sometimes we don't really know what to do when we're in situations. Um, a lot of times we find ourselves feeling stuck, um, don't really know what the next step is, what the next thing is to do. Um, but the Bible says here, if you lack wisdom, which we all may lack sometimes, we need to ask the Lord and he'll give it to us. It just doesn't make sense to keep doing the same thing over and over, getting the same results and being stuck in a situation when you can be free, uh, you can just be better, you know? Um, so sometimes we have to ask for wisdom and allow the Lord to give us wisdom so that we can see things differently and come out and be better um, in situations. So those are three scriptures that you can use um, to pray with assurance. And um, like I said before, it's different ways to pray. Um, when you're praying with assurance, you're pretty sure you know God has already said these things. He's already made it clear that he's making a way for this situation. Um, the other thing is, to pray with submission. I'm going to say that. Pray with submission. And this comes into play when uh, things are not really clear. The outcome isn't clear. Someone may be sick. 
Uh, someone may be on their way to prison. Someone may be um, just in a confusing situation and you don't really know what's gonna happen here. You don't know the outcome. In that type of instance, we are to pray with submission. Um, and what does that mean? That means we're gonna be submitting to the will of God in that situation. Because you know, we have to keep in mind, he still has a plan and he still knows best. You know, so we have to pray with submission. And I have a um, scripture I wanna go to for that one and that's 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse seven through nine. And that's um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse seven through nine. And I'll read that. <clears throat> and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now that's one thing to think about. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice, three times, he prayed, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, now this is what's important to hear here, my strength is made perfect in weakness. So who's supposed to get the glory out of these situations that we're in? We know it's God. God is supposed to be the one to get the glory. And sometimes we have to be uh, we appear weak in the situation. So whether whatever the case may be, it may be because we're ill, we're sick, we just can't get up, can't do it, but things still have to be done. That's when God shows up and he gets the glory. Now you see his strength. And that's what we want to show people and direct them to God's strength in the situation. Um, even though we may not be able to do certain things, it's not about looking at us all the time. It's about looking at God and he is the one to get the glory. So um, in that sense, we want to submit to the will of God because sometimes things may just, they just may not go the way that we are looking for them to go. But we have to know even in that, God is still the one in control and he's still getting the glory. Even though the situation may look bad for me, but it's gonna look like a big miracle once you see things actually still come to pass. Um, and I can say that just as an example, using our church um, with how ill uh, our pastor had, has been and even Sister Bell has been. They may have been ill or sick. And even in their weaknesses, though, it's God's church. So he still showed up and gave us plenty of miracles and made things come to pass. And that was, that's who got the glory, is God. So we have to be satisfied with that and know that sometimes we have to pray with submission. Amen. Um, that's pretty much everything that I have. Again, I want us to keep, um, it keep we need to stay in the mindset, I'm just gonna say it again, of um, our prayerful mindset, knowing that the Lord is concerned with the things that concern us. God is bigger than our situation. Faith and prayer go hand in hand. Gotta use both. Um, and also knowing that we're going to either be praying with assurance, quoting the word of God, knowing that God has already said this is going to come to pass. He's already given us the go ahead with this and he's given us a way out. Or either we're going to be praying with submission, ready to give God the glory in the situation, even though we may uh, appear weak at that point but God is gonna get the glory. 
So I pray that you all were blessed uh, from this message. Um, hopefully you don't have any questions because I don't really know how to ask questions. Too. But um, I see a lot of words coming up on the screen. I don't know. So I'm going to turn this back over to Minister Iverson. God bless you all. Please keep praying for me in Jesus' name. Amen. And I don't know how my auntie joined on here. I see her name. Yeah, yeah. Sister, Sister Thelma's <laughs> up on here. Uh, 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 I didn't even know. I'm not looking at you because I don't want to be nervous. Hey, man, do we have uh, uh, do we have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Question. Is Bishop Bell on the line? Yeah, Bishop. Yes, case yes, I am. All right, praise Good. the Lord, Bishop. Just in case there are any questions. Amen. <laughs> That was smooth, Sister Tara. All right. Hey, man, praise the Lord. Any questions about prayer? The, the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous avail is yeah. money. Yeah. So we need to understand it's very important that we pray. And then we have to pray according to his will. Amen. But I, I like what Sister Tara said. There's no prayer. Prayer changes things. There's nothing too big, nothing too small. Prayer meets the need. Amen? Amen. And uh, just like mercy suits the case. Amen. Elder, Elder, Elder Allen used to say that mercy suits the case. I don't care what your situation is, mercy suits that case. And so prayer is the key to victory in every aspect of our lives. Sometimes we can go to the point where we're tired, and sometimes we get frustrated because it don't seem like we can get the victory over a particular thing. Anybody ever been bound by something? You just can't get the victory over it seem like? Mm -hmm. Start praying. God yes. will strengthen and encourage you over any condition that you find yourself in. And I don't care what the condition is. Let's, let's be honest. We talking, we grow. Sometimes you can have a lust spirit. You get saved, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, but you still find yourself lusting. That can come only out by fasting and praying. Nah. Amen. Because understand this, fasting is not designed to get you stuff. Fasting is designed to get you close to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So fasting and praying, you can pray for things, God can bless you, but you can't fast for things. You have to fast for the Lord to get closer to you. So fasting and praying is a combination. They work together. It's hard to have one without the other. Amen. So yeah. I thought Sister Tara taught an excellent class. You oh, know, man. normally at church we say, let's give her a hand. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. But we can certainly thank God for her. Amen. To keep her up in prayer. She had to deal with Raven. I heard Raven in the background. <laughs> so tell Raven we heard her. I don't know what she was doing, but she was cutting up. Praise the Lord. But we thank God for Elder Jackson. And all the children and Sister Tara did an excellent, excellent job. And therefore, we need to understand it's vitally important that we pray. That's why I thank God for this prayer line. Uh, I've had so many people to call and testify that they feel so connected to the church. Sometimes I've had people say, I've been in this church for 20 years. I never felt as connected now as I then as I do now. Amen. Yeah. We're connected with people all over the country. I think, uh, is Sister Thelma Smith on here? She was. I don't know what she's doing. Let me see. Well, I think she was. Uh, Amen. Yeah, she's still on here. She's still on here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. That's a blessing. Sister Thelma Smith, all the way in South Carolina. And she's still connected. Amen. Lynn and Elkin Smith, still connected. So many, many people still connected. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. So we need to understand it's vitally important that prayer is the case. If we want our church, if we want our ministry, I can, uh, if you want our church and our ministry to go forward, we must go closer to the Lord. That's Amen. the most vital thing. Go close. Because when you get closer to the Lord, you're going to be obedient to his word. You're going to pay your tithes. You're going to give your offering. You're going to serve in whatever capacity the Lord places you in. You're not going to get bitter and upset because you don't have a title. You don't have a position. Lord, deliver me from folks who get mad over positions. Mm -hmm. 
Hey man, how many know when we get to heaven, we're not gonna be rewarded for being the choir director? All right. All we're, gonna right. be, we're gonna be rewarded for being the servant of the Lord. That's the most That's vital, right. important thing. So we Amen. thank God for the prayer. We thank God for the teaching. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Like if, now, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. If not, we're gonna turn it back over to okay. Minister okay. Iverson. And that the Lord will bless in a great way. And also, Saints, before I let you go, pray for this country. Yes. Amen. Pray for this country. The racism <laughs> that is still, I don't know how much they think black folks gonna take. We can only take so right. much. Yes. My father right. used to tell right. when I was a child, my father used to say, You can whip a dog enough, he's gonna turn on you. Oh yeah. They can't just just kill black people like we're nothing, like we're animals in the street. Just stomp right. the man to death, kept his foot on his neck, and the man died. And we're supposed right. to just take that in stride. Right. That is, uh, but you know what? The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Prayer can change things. Yes, it can. And all those people that are doing those racist things, God know their phone number, address, and zip code. We don't have to, we don't have to uh, hurt them. God gonna deal with them. Because there's a principle of reaping and sowing. That's right. There is a principle of reaping and sowing. That's good and bad. Amen. It ain't always got to be bad, but like Apostle Paul said about Alexander the coppersmith, may the Lord reward him according to his deeds. And that's how the Lord gonna do. He gonna start rewarding people according to their deeds. So saints, let's stay prayerful. Pray for that family that lost that uh, black man and, and pray that the Lord's will will be done. Amen. 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 Now, uh, I did have a uh, pre. Amen. I did have a pre Bible class uh, question. Um, I, called, uh, I ain't gonna put them on blast because they, they they didn't want they didn't want the, the question they asked to, to uh, they didn't want it to be known that they were asking the question. All right. Online. Uh, now, um, and I'm sure they aren't the only one that probably had this question, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and address it now. Amen. Uh, the question that the person the called to ask, they said, what is Pentecost? What is Pentecost, essentially? They said, what is Pentecost on Sunday? But that essentially it was, what is Pentecost? The word Pentecost uh, is the word for 50. Is, is the word that right. means 50. Um, and it right. represents 50 days after the Passover. 50 days after right. the Passover. The reason that we celebrate Pentecost Sunday huh? is because Pen the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover, is when the Church of Jesus Christ was born. Right. So we're celebrating the birthday of the Church of Jesus Christ. That's what we're celebrating when we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And that's also when the dispensation of grace Amen. was ushered in. Absolutely. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were still under the law. That's right. So technically, technically, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are Old Testament books. That's right. It just came after the Right, Intertestament right. period of 400 years of silence that God didn't speak to the prophets or to his people. But then when the church was born, the dispensation of grace was given was in on the day of Pentecost. So it is a very, very powerful holiday that I think every church should celebrate Pentecost. But most of the time it's only it's only sanctified Pentecostal tongue talking churches that even celebrate Pentecost service. That's right. That's true. Amen. Unfortunately, yes, yeah, unfortunate. Um, um, and then uh, one thing we uh, uh, don't think about uh, last things after that is that uh, the reason that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are in the uh, Old Testament, even though we read them in our books as being in the New Testament, right? Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is talking about what Jesus did to fulfill the law and right. the requirement of the law in order for the day of Pentecost to be able to be, uh, happen. So right. So the law in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John went through his death and his sacrifice, and then what his sacrifice paid for was implemented on the day of Pentecost. Right. 
um, exactly. celebrate. Amen. So, so for anybody who didn't know what it was, now, now you know. And if somebody asks you, you can tell them. Amen. Uh, and if they don't understand what Pentecost is, just tell them you sanctified. Everybody understand that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, don't care. I don't care who you are, what denomination. All you got to do is tell people, well, I'm sanctified. Right. They're they going to look at you differently, and they're going to have different expectations of you. When you tell people you sanctified, they always have this image of almost being perfect. But well, we're not perfect, but we're striving for perfection. Right. Right. Amen. All Pentecostal people, all sanctified people should be striving for perfection. That means spiritual maturity. Absolutely. Amen. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget to, I'm going to post a link in um, uh, that you can connect to uh, in the chat. Don't forget to uh, continue to give uh, tithes and offering. Continue to those who uh, are still paying on your building fund or who paid it off and you want to give more continue uh to contribute to that right. so that when we you know bless that we can come back into the sanctuary we can come in back into the sanctuary and it can be fully restored walled painted and fixed and, and, and beautiful amen and we can walk oh, in yeah. um, uh, uh proud of uh what the lord has blessed us to be able to do amen all right mm -hmm. all we need is money that's right <laughs> And that is, uh, That's right. We got Jesus already. Yeah. All we need is money. Right. The Bible says <laughs> money answers all things. Right. That's what the Bible say. Right. As, as my wife say, you in the book. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'll post a link there so you all can continue to uh, click on that link directly from the chat now um, and uh, give and uh, uh, Sister Cassandra said, the Lord will give seed to the sword. That's absolutely true. That's right. If you have a mind to give, God will bless you with money to give. Amen. He will bless you with the talent, the, talent, the time uh, 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 to give. Not just your money, give, bless you to give uh, uh, your time. The Lord will help you to redeem the time. That's Amen. right. If you got a mind to give, God will bless you in order to be able to give. Amen. Amen. Can we hear from Sister Thelma Smith? Is it possible? Yeah. Uh, she probably don't know how to unmute her. I'll try to unmute her. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, let me try to unmute her. That's you. That's you. That's you. That's you. Smith, we can hear you. Where is she? Can you hear me, sister? I just unmuted her, unless she just you know, she was just there. Oh, yeah, Praise she did. I don't know if Praise she Praise the Lord, sister Smith. Praise the Lord. Jeez. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I saw. Thank you, uh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to hear you, Bishop. I love you. I love you. I thank God for you. And I can Amen. Well, see, it's just like you right here with us now. <laughs> tell yes. Reverend Hill, tell Reverend Hill, we see him later. <laughs> <laughs> tell he's a nice guy. We see him later. We got, we got you back. <laughs> and we got you back now. Oh, We're gonna leave him. We're gonna leave little Elton Elkin with him. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Bishop. Now Elkin back here listening to you. I said, "Look, Elkin, I ain't talking about." I ain't oh, talking he's about Elkin Jr. Okay, I ain't talking about Elkin Jr. Okay, uh, I'm talking about Lil Elkin, one to get ready to get married. That's right. He already got married, didn't he? That's Cedric. Oh, okay. Cedric got married. I know Elkin, about married. That's his, he's the oldest son. <laughs> Elkin Jr., we're gonna have to have we're gonna have Elkin Jr. come up here to preach for us. All right, Bishop, tell yes. me no, he got a head tell he got a head like a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> I know he can do it. <laughs> he said he ain't got nothing to say. He said he got nothing to say, he said nothing. Well, that's a miracle then, like, hey, look. <laughs> Not mine. 
<laughs> What's going on, El? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank God for you all uh, joining us. It's a blessing. Amen. Thank the Lord. I'm sure you all got blessed by Sister Tara's teaching. She taught an excellent Bible class. Yes, she did. Amen. Yeah. Prayer and faith go together. The Bible said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah. Amen. So we thank God for thank God for Sister Thelma Smith and all of you all that joined in. Thank the Lord for all the members of the Apostolic House of Prayer that's joined in. We know God is going to continue to bless us. And we'll see you first thing in the morning. Minister okay. Iverson. Amen. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, hey. uh, the statewide virtual What's that? service oh, at yeah. 3 o'clock. At Sunday, the statewide virtual Pentecost service at 3 o'clock. Right. 3 o'clock, we want everybody to uh, be on online for the Pentecost service. Now, it, will, it, will, it will be streaming. Um, I, I, they may give us a Zoom um, access code, but I know it will be streaming from... Uh, on uh, AFC's website as well. I don't know if they'll give us a Zoom access code to be able to watch it all together, but it'll definitely be streaming at three o'clock on uh, a I believe it's AFCChicago.org is the web address. I I'll have it for you Sunday morning for sure. Exactly what it is. Um, hey man, uh, they a they asked me to come down there and be on it, uh, so I can I come down to Thirty Eighth Street so I can be seen. I told him, I said, I ain't had no haircut or no shave in two months. <laughs> I ain't coming. I said, get some of them younger ones. Get some of them young something ambitious. <laughs> barbershop is closed. I don't just let anybody get on my head. Amen. So as soon as my barbershop open up, I'll get a haircut. All Amen. right. I heard that. Amen. Uh, so, yes, we will be back at uh, in the morning at 7 o'clock. I also saw something um, that Brother Darren's posting in band for a communion uh communion package pickups this Friday from twelve to four. And I'll Amen. church. I'll get some clarity on that um to have for you in the morning before Friday comes. Right. Because we will have communion during the Pentecost, uh, Pentecost service. service. Right. Amen. Right. Yeah, so I'll have all the information for you all tomorrow. Hey Amen. If we don't have Amen. any uh, uh, other uh, statements or uh, questions, uh, sister, I mean, I'm sorry, Deacon, uh, well, she on here. Uh, let's have the um, teacher uh, dismiss us in prayer. Amen. 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 Let every heart pray. Yes, Father, Lord, in the name Jesus. of Jesus, Lord, we yes, come Lord. to you right now thanking you, yes, Lord, 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 thanking and praising you for all your many blessings, God. Thank you for this lesson, Lord, on prayer. Thank you for your word that you've given us, Lord God. We thank you and ask that you bless us to continue to stand in faith, Lord God, seeking your face, seeking your will, your way, Lord, and going forth in your word as we communicate with you. Amen. Yes, we watch over every household represented here today. Uh, Keep us all safe and blessed. Bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.